So in past videos, I mentioned that Rokushiki, the six powers of Cypher Po, are likely based on the six realms or six paths of Samsara in Buddhism, the cycle of death and rebirth. And in the Conqueror's Haki video, I even assigned each individual power to an individual path without really much of an explanation. I wanted to explain how each power correspond to a specific path in samsara in the hockey livestream but that went um so instead let's just do it in this short video it will be more organized and you won't have to use observation hockey to guess what i'm saying starting off a good hint towards this is in the name of their power scaling unit doriki do is that same chinese dao meaning way just with different pronunciation and it's also used in buddhism to mean the buddhist teachings essentially doriki means power of the dao or power of bodhi it's almost like your daoist or buddhist power level there's also the fact that the six realms in buddhism are also called six paths rokudo anyways on to the techniques themselves starting off gepo literally moon step the technique to kick the void and float corresponds to the human path the human path in buddhism is the one in which buddhahood can be more easily achieved as you're not distracted either by immense suffering and insatiable cravings or immense pleasure there is supposedly more of a balance the connection of Gepo to walking towards Buddhahood is seen in its name, Moon Step. The moon being a recurrent symbol of Buddha nature in Zen and Brother Mahayana Buddhism. The fact that this technique is based on interacting with the void, see my Haki videos for more detail on what this means if you haven't, the void itself, Mu being equated to Buddha nature and it being an ability to fly, this being a power often ascribed to the Buddha and especially to the Shan or Senning, the flying enlightened immortals from Taoism, that got associated with Buddhahood as these two traditions mixed in China. Also, I find it fitting that this is the one technique from Rokushiki that Sanji learned, as it was Sanji's humanity that Oda really went on to emphasize with his whole Jerma arc. Kamie literally paper drawing, which allows users to effortlessly dodge attacks, corresponds to the Deva or God path. Here is our first instance of something we'll see with other Rokushiki names, puns. Kami, other than meaning paper, also means God. Actually, going further with the pun, Kamie could be a meeting or gathering of gods. The one guy in One Piece who literally claimed to be God NL was also noted for his proficiency in observation haki. I've talked about in the past how Fukuro sensing the power levels of the CP9 agents, which he called a part of Rokushiki style, was a pretty clear case of observation. So my guess is Kamie probably involves some degree of intention sensing from observation mixed with extended flexibility from some level of semi-kikan to effortlessly dodge attacks. Weirdly, it's pretty similar to Gomu Gomu no Bo that Luffy used in Skypiea by emptying his mind. And emptying the mind is something that I said was important to observation. So it might be that Gomu Gomu no Bo itself had Luffy reaching some very primitive state of intention sensing. Moving on, Rankyaku, Stormlag, corresponds to the Ashura path. For one, its naming fits with the violent and destructive nature of the Ashras. But more importantly, some of the CP9 members seem to specialize in certain Rokushuki techniques. The Rankyaku specialist was Kaku, who in NS lobby fought Zoro. Not only did Kaku use Rankyaku more extensively than any of the other members, his nickname when he was in Galila was Yamakaze, Mountain Wind, likely a pun on Kamakaze, sickle wind or scythe wing that is said to be created from Rankyaku when the ability is described by Khalifa. Kaku, during his fight with Zoro, claims that he is in fact using Yontoryu for sword style by using one sword in each hand and Rankyaku with his two legs, as Rankyaku is a slashing technique. 
Despite the obvious BS in Kaku's logic, I find it interesting that he's allegedly using Rankyaku to increase his number of swords, one-upping Zoro's Santoryu through his sword style. Because later, Zoro defeats Kaku precisely by using Ashura to increase his number of swords, even further, to 9 sword style, creating this funny parallel between Kaku's Rankyaku and Zoro's Ashura. Soru, literally meaning shave, corresponds to the hungry ghost or preta path. The hungry ghosts are said to be beings in states of endless craving, mostly hunger, and invisible to humans. So I find it interesting that Soru is precisely the ability to move so fast that you become invisible, and also that it is the one ability from Rukushiki that Luffy learns. You know, insatiable hunger sure fits him. Soru is likely also a pun. A Soru can also be the Japanese version of the English word so, like Big Mom's Soru Soru no Mi. You get it? So, ghosts. Interestingly, Big Mom also suffered from near insatiable hunger. Anyways, back in my Haki Foundations video, I argue that Haki is simply using a person's bioavailable energy in a natural ways. The same energy that is used by the body to function, essentially stamina. And also that the Haki flow techniques that Hyogoro taught Luffy about moving the Haki or the Ryuo from parts of the body that don't need as much is thus moving this bioavailable energy. The purpose of this in the context of what Hyogoro was teaching Luffy was to use this energy flow for emission. But is this the only thing that you could do by controlling the flow of energy inside the body? Couldn't you, for example, flow a lot of energy into a certain body part to use it as energy to move your muscles in a much more energetic, more explosive move than what would normally be possible? This, I believe, is the key to Soru, using internal flow to send a great amount of energy to the legs that is then released in an instant by rapidly kicking the ground around 10 times, enabling the user to perform one move that is way faster than what they normally would be capable of. Note that it is only in Onigashima that Sanji, who specializes in agility and leg strength, is able to move so fast that he becomes invisible, but then he can do it continuously. He can move at that speed because his body has simply gotten to that level, whereas CP9 members could only move that fast when using Soro, and then return to their regular speed, as that speed is something they are only capable of by using energy from all over the body via inner flow in one explosive technique. It's not a movement speed they are able to sustain. This is also why Luffy was able to use Soro only when using Gear 2nd, while Urokoshiki masters can flow their energy to their legs via Haki flow, Luffy can achieve the same effect by forcefully flowing his blood, which carries the bioavailable energy as glycos and such and oxygen to the different parts of the body. Physically forcing the increased flow of his blood is just a different way of controlling the flow of his energy. Takai, iron body, corresponds to the hell or naraka realm. The Buddhist Naraka are divided into hot and cold hells. For hot hells, specifically, the use of iron in descriptions is very frequent. The ground is described as being made of hot iron heated by huge flames. The torture beings are attacked by others with iron claws or cut or impaled by demons with iron axes and spears, etc. The one who seemed to specialize in Tekai in CP9 was Jabura, being the only CP9 member able to move using Tekai on his whole body, a style he called Tekai Kempo. He fought Sanji in a similar way to what happened to Kaku and Zoro. Sanji was able to defeat Jabura by using Diabo Jamb, Devil Leg, like Sanji had to use the Flames of Hell to pierce Jabura's Hellforge Iron Body. Also, I kind of suspect Jabura was named after Tabura. From Dragon Ball Z, who was the king of the demon realm. Moving on, Shigan, finger gun, corresponds to the 
animal realm, something we see with the CPNI members and even former member who's who is that they each seem to have a very strong animal theme, even ones that don't have Zoan devil fruits. More than with any of the other Rokushiki techniques, it's with Shigan that their individual animal traits really come through as variations of the power. Luchi and Jabura use their claws to enhance Shigan's piercing power. Kaku uses his giraffe nose. Who's who uses his saber tooth fangs for a variation of flying Shigan. Its name is also a pun. Shigan is a Buddhist term that means this world or this life, and transliterating its characters means this shore. See, the term comes from a very old analogy in Buddhism to attaining nirvana, enlightenment, as being like crossing a river of craving. So this shore, Shigan is samsara, and that shore, Higan, is nirvana. So if Shigan is samsara as a whole, the six paths, why would Oda put this reference in the animal path specifically? Well, ignoring the supernatural paths of gods, asuras, ghosts, and hell beings, really you have animals and humans, who actually are animals. In a way, samsara, the cycle of death and rebirth, is the cycle of sentient life, animal life. And finally, we have the seventh technique, which corresponds to transcending samsara, reaching nirvana, higan, appropriately named rokugan, six king gun, or staying with the pun of shigan, the shore of the six king, the shore of the one who has mastered the six paths and transcended them. Rokogan is described by Luchi as something only available to those who have mastered the six techniques, so I believe that certain aspects of all the other six powers are used for Rokogan, such that mastering them builds the foundation for Rokogan. As I have described in the Nature Haki video, I believe that to some extent Rokogan transforms Haki into impact, which is why Luffy compared the effect to that of an impact or rejectile. Now, what is the downside of impact or rejectiles? Right, the backlash that hurts the user. So to safely use something that emulates an impact dial, it would be necessary to protect your body by reinforcing it with armament, especially the hands, which is why mastering Tekai and Shigan is essential. Takai makes it very difficult to move, but that doesn't matter since the user is completely still when using Rokugan. The technique likely requires using a great amount of energy of Haki at an instant, thus why mastering Soru would be essential to master the internal flow technique to flow a great amount of Haki from all over the body to the hands to be released as impact. The fact that it uses such a great amount of energy from all over the body is likely why we see Luchi panting, catching his breath after using Rokugan. And being a nature haki technique, practice with the other nature haki techniques of Rankyaku and Gepo likely helps. But how would Kamie help? at all. Well, remember I said Kamie likely uses some degree of observation, and in the observation haki video I talked about how observation involves tuning your haki to sense the ripples on the void. What if Rokugan needs an even greater affinity with the void, because it uses the void offensively as a medium to transmit the impact into the opponent. So if observation is about sensing the ripples on the void, perhaps Rokugan is like creating massive ripples on the void deliberately to attack your opponent with. It might sound crazy, but thematically it would make a lot of sense, because especially with the mixing of Buddhism and Taoism and maiden ideas of returning to the undifferentiated void Wuji, Buddhahood in East Asian Buddhism was, and still is, often understood as becoming one with emptiness. Does it make sense for the technique that represents Buddhahood to be the one in which you send your haki, your spirit, into the void? 
Also, before I go, I don't really think this means anything, but at the very least it seems like a fun coincidence. The terms Shigan and Higan are also used in Japanese Buddhism when talking about Sansu River, a legendary river that separates the land of the living from the land of the dead. This is why the spider lily, the flower associated with death in Japanese culture, is named Higanbana, flower from Higan from that shore. Legend is that it takes a toll of six mon to cross the river. Mon was the lowest unit of currency in Japan from 1336 until 1870, over five centuries, the higher units of currency being in order Shu, Bu, and finally Ryo. Sounds kinda similar to Anu's Ryuo that had this cultural focus on the flow of Haki, allowing even a mission, right? Well, the rate of conversion was such that 4,000 mon was equal to one Ryo. I'm just mentioning this because it turns out that the one guy who could use Rokugan that I said needs internal flow, Luchi had a dori key of exactly 4000. Anyways, that will be it for this video guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and ciao!